I'm Danny. This is Asha. We're two Kiwis who, after five years living in London, bought a sailboat called Bacchus and set off on an adventure to sail home to New Zealand. We sailed the south coast of England, the Atlantic coast of France, Spain and Portugal, the Canary Islands and then all 19 days across the Atlantic Ocean to the paradise of Barbados. We spent six months exploring some of the beautiful islands in the Caribbean, got a little waylaid by a global pandemic, and are now continuing our voyage home. Follow us on our adventure. On our last episode, we finally made the choice to leave the Caribbean behind and head through the canal to the Pacific. But before we could do that, we needed to haul back us out and give her a coating of anti -fowl. So. That was successful. Bacchus is out of the water. And her bottom looks pretty dirty. But we'll give that a good scrub and then she gets a lick of paint. cooler today which is great. Uh, not a bad day to be working on the boat. Hopefully the rain holds off because we've been having quite a few uh, like tropical sort of um, squalls come through with really heavy rain so that's not great for painting. But um, yeah no it's, uh, it's a lot cooler than it has been so a good day to, to get working. So this anode here on our propeller shaft this one's job is to protect the propeller and the stern gear from corrosion and we can see it's doing its job pretty well because it's almost completely eaten away. We put that on a year ago. The propeller has got a few little pink spots on it um, which indicates that there's been some corrosion um, with the bronze. I, I think it's the zinc that the bronze loses uh, and it starts to go pink and it goes weak. So I don't know whether that was from us or from the previous owner um, but we definitely want to replace that anode. And then this anode over here really hasn't corroded much at all because this was we didn't replace this one last time because it still had lots of life left in it and it looks like it's still quite a lot there so I'm gonna have to check the electrical connections for the anode on the inside of the boat because it's it's meant to be bonded electrically with all of the through hull fittings where our sea cocks come out of the boat and by having that electrical bond this one is meant to corrode first instead of the sea cock uh, fitting corroding but because it isn't corroding that tells me that there might be a, uh, a corroded wire maybe somewhere that the electricity is not being able to flow. So I'll need to check that. And we'll definitely be replacing this one. Good morning. First job of the day. <coughs> Just masking up Bacchus's waterline. Uh, and then we'll uh, start anti-fouling the bottom. Yeah, so we gave her a big uh, wet sand yesterday, so we've got most of the anti-foul off. You can see there's a little bit of the darker colour on there, but now we can get painting. So as we mentioned earlier, it was a little bit tricky to um, find anti foul because all the shops in Panama had been closed. Um, but we did manage to get some a couple of days ago in Panama City, but they um, only had one tin of black and one tin of blue, so um, we've got two different colours. Um, but actually we think that's going to be quite handy because we'll be able to put one coat on and then when we're putting the second coat on we'll be able to see where we have had the coat. So. Um, so we're going to go with the blue first and then chuck the black over, over top because the blue is quite light. Um, we think the black will look a little bit nicer and then it'll be really easy to see when the anti is coming off because the blue will start to shine through. It's a bit annoying with these um, props that they've used to support the boat. There's so many of them, they're all little patches where we can't actually put the anti-foul on. 
So before Bacchus goes back in the water when she's in the slings, we'll need to run around and uh, do all of these patches that we can't get in these areas where the chain sits. Uh, when the boat's in a proper cradle, there's only really four spots that you can't get. Whereas with these props, there's lots of spots. Wouldn't mind a uh, mechanical paint mixer right now. I'm wearing long sleeves today and gloves as a lesson from yesterday because I was um, completely blue by the end of the day. I don't know why, but I get covered, absolutely covered in paint when I'm painting and Asha just gets a few spots. So I think I'm a little bit too energetic. back in the water everything's almost dry I've just put a final layer of egg white onto our prop here so it's got I think nine or ten layers now of egg white that I've painted on and um, this was a trick some friends those friends of us of ours told us to do to help stop any growth on there but who knows if it works or not but we have had a lot of growth on our prop previously so hopefully the egg white helps protect it once it goes back in the water and actually this morning has been um, covering up all the spots that these, um, I don't know what these are called, but props. props have been holding the boat up. So there's a lot of areas that we couldn't get to and underneath the keel. Um, so that's been all lifted into the slings this morning and Ash has gone around and, and um, topped up those parts. But it dries so quickly, it's pretty much dry. So we could probably go in any, any time now. Mm. Yeah, it's been a lightning fast pit stop. Um, we came out on Friday and it's Monday, so we're ready to go back in again. Uh, so yeah, gave the bottom a quick sand, uh, two coats of anti-foul, changed an anode, uh, did the prop and egg white, had a wiggle of the propeller and the rudder just to check the bearings. Um, they feel good, um, keel feels nice and solid. Uh, yeah, and that's us, ready to go back in. So we're all uh, approved now to go through the Panama Canal. It's happening on Thursday. We've been working on all the paperwork that needs to happen for that. It's exciting. It is quite exciting. So we're heading through to the Pacific side and we're not gonna hang around there for long. And then we will be heading towards French Polynesia and on our way home. So it's gonna be a short Pacific cruise for us, but uh, we're really looking forward to it. So it's our last few days in the marina here. Uh, the fruit and vegetable trucks just rolled up. So we're going to go and stock up on as much fresh fruit and vegetables that we can put on Bacchus really that we'll, that we'll be able to eat and we're just kind of we need to top up our tanks full of water and that's about it really we're pretty much ready to go pretty much ready to go but we are just enjoying <coughs> the perks of being in a marina the showers the pool the restaurant the being able to walk ashore without having to row your dinghy every day mm. so uh, we're just making the most of that for the last few days and yeah we'll be over in the Pacific by the end of the week Exciting stuff. You guys look like you're going to get a lot of fruit and veggies. Yeah. Oh, yeah. 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 oh well done. You only get two very much. And it's not you, it's not very good. Yeah, yeah, it's all that nice. I have Alright, got another pumpkin. Yeah, they keep. Got a lot. Did you say you wanted some? Oh, yes, please. What do you want? 
Ah, oh, okay. I don't know. Bunch. Bunch of. Is that right? Yeah. Awesome. Thank you. I, I thought it was cilantro. Is it? It is. It smells like cilantro. Yeah, the leaves are completely different, eh? Yeah. Shadowbeni, they call it. In, it's 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 also medicinal for stomachs. Mm. It definitely tastes like coriander. Cool. Do you need any of this? So I just finished cutting ashes here out on the dock, and I don't trust him to cut mine. So I've um, come up to the marina bathrooms and I'm just gonna give myself a chop. So see how this goes. To transit the canal outside of coronavirus, you can choose to use an agent or not. The agent fees have dropped a lot over the years, so unless you're really counting your pennies, most people use one to help navigate their way through the very bureaucratic process. With COVID-19, you don't have a choice, and you have to use an agent. We chose to use Eric Galvez, who had some great recommendations online, but we didn't find him overly helpful, and would recommend a guy called Rogelio instead, which some of the other boats in the marina used, and he was great, going over and beyond every time to help out the cruisers. First step was being measured by an official. This process differed for every boat, but for us there was some rough use of a tape measure and a quick look at our toilet, and then Asher went off to sign a bunch of liability documents. The lines and vendors we have on board were not long enough or big enough to use for the transit, so we had to hire these. As we were going through in a raft, we would only end up using two of the lines, but we needed to have four on board in case we, for some reason, got separated from our raft. We had one final party with our marina family, but now that the jobs are all done, it was time to say goodbye and get out of here. We've got a full house tonight. Finally left, le finally left Shelter Bay Marina. And uh, here we go. Here's our What's up? mates from Calicova are going to help us get yeah. through the canal tomorrow. Follow me on YouTube. <laughs> And over here, just anchoring now, is our friends Fat Susan. So they're going to be in the raft with us tomorrow. So they're just putting their anchor down now. And there is Tanuki. So that's the, the big boat that's going in the middle of our raft tomorrow. Asha. She does. Hello. How are you feeling about tomorrow? I'm surprisingly relaxed. It's probably the beer. I'm feeling good. I'm excited to get through. Okay, get back to him tomorrow. Yeah. <laughs> I'm, yeah. pretty, I'm pretty relaxed too. <laughs> good. Probably yeah. shouldn't have too many more beers. No, I don't want to be hungover going through the canal. Um, <laughs> but no, the advisor should be here like four or five tomorrow morning, and then we'll uh, we'll crack on. Hopefully, the little donkey can do the job. No overheating allowed. You look like you've seen a bit of sun today. <laughs> I have. Panama got me today. What have you been doing today? What haven't I been doing today? Today was flat out. Um, lots of jobs. And normally I hide from the sun in the middle of the day. But today I was out there getting it done. So it's four o'clock in the morning. We're up and we're just waiting for our pilot to board, our advisor to board. So you can see the pilot boat approaching. Tanuki next to us, and then he'll come up to us and we'll get our advisor for the day. What's your name? Bacchus! the pilot boat three attempts to get the advisor on board Bacchus. We had been told by previous yachts that this can be one of the most dangerous parts of the transit where damage can occur as the pilot boats are so big next to the small yachts. Gracias. 
Uh, we're just heading up towards the first set of locks now um, with uh, Fat Susan and Tanuki. It took about an hour to motor the four miles to the start of the first locks, the Gatton locks. We used this time to set up the lines and fenders on Bacchus. We tied a large loop in the end of each line which would be placed around the bollard in the locks and made sure the lines ran freely through the fairlead and onto the cleat. Once at the entrance we rafted up to Tanuki. Fat Susan was already rafted up and then we could start our approach into the canal after the ship we had been paired with. The currents are unique at the entrance due to the mixing of fresh and salt water and reach four knots, so manoeuvring the raft can be difficult. So we're just about to go through the first lock <laughs> and it is absolutely pissing down. So um, it's going to be fun. Our raft didn't have a strong centre boat with a big engine, so our advisors instructed us to use the outside boat's engines to manoeuvre the boats by switching between reverse and forward so that the raft could easily turn. As we entered, we were thrown two monkey fists, a knot about the size of a cricket ball attached to a thin line. We tied this to each of our big loops and held onto it until the line handlers indicated it was time to release the lines. We would then quickly ease the line and they would haul it up onto the bollard. Once all four lines were secured on the bollards, we would need to pull in our lines and quickly lock them off. There was a huge amount of force on the boat, so this was a lot easier said than done. Oh, it's a little bit nerve-wracking coming in. We lost the line out of the fair lead. As you can see, we've got these big thick lines going all the way up and there's a lot of load on them. We've got three boats worth of load, so Ash had to help me out, but I think we're good now. The gates then close behind you and the lock begins to fill with water. You can see the raft begin to swing around with the turbulence which was particularly strong in the first lock due to the mix of fresh and salt water. As the raft lifted it was the line handler's job to pull their line in whenever there was slack and try to keep the raft as straight as possible. Lock number two. We've changed roles haven't we? Yeah, Danny's on the wheel now and I'm going to do the line. It's quite physical, there's a lot of load and with these big lines um, there's a lot of friction on them as they come through our terrible fair leads on backers. Uh, so it's quite a, uh, it's quite physical. Yeah, I really struggled in the first lock, trying to manhandle the rope and get it through the fair lead and keep pulling out the slack. So I'm on the wheel and um, Ash is now doing the ropes. Gatton locks, which are the first set of three locks taking you up into Gatton Lake, are all back to back. So once you reach the top of one, the big ship in front of you will start your engine and the locomotives will move it forward into the next lock. Once this is done, you haul the monkey fist in and the line handler walks alongside you as you drive the raft up through the gates and into the next lock. see the turbulence that comes through when the ship starts their engine. Lake Gatton very soon and so far so good. What are we up to now Asha? Made it into Lake Gatton and we're just motoring along, it's a bit rainy and a bit grey but we came out of the locks with no drama and line handlers are downstairs ripping into some bacon and eggs and yeah, this is us for the next five hours or so just motoring across the lake Yeah, it's not a great day Great 
Driving across the lake is pretty beautiful, even on a wet day, with the lake surrounded by the lush jungle. It is super important that you stay in the channel though, as it is a man-made lake and outside of the channel there are trees everywhere in the water. All day you are being passed in both directions by massive ships, which is pretty impressive. We would never normally get this close to ships of this size. Coming through uh, what's called Galliard Cut at the moment in the canal, and we're right next to this ship. And unfortunately, we're just matching speeds, so um, he's been driving next to us for about 10 minutes now. We were overtaking him, and now he's overtaking us. Uh, but we are slowly getting clear. Uh, he's uh, going to go ahead of us, I think. Now for the down locks. The first lock was the Pedro Miguel lock, which takes you down 9 metres to the Miraflores Lake. The main difference to the down process is that the raft now enters in front of the big ship, and of course, rather than tightening the lines, you loosen them as the raft drops down the lock. But everything else remains the same. First of the down locks. First of the down locks, yeah, we're getting there now. How are you feeling about this one? Yeah, good. This one was pretty easy last time on Tula, so hopefully more of the same for us. Um, yeah, it's about two in the afternoon, so it's been a long day, but we're making good progress. We've got this lock, and then a short uh, swim across the lake, and then two more locks, and then we're out into the Pacific. Pretty cool. And it stopped raining, so yeah, it stopped raining. that's good. <laughs> yeah, it's quite hot now. And behind us, coming up behind us, is our ship, our buddy ship, getting dragged by the locomotives. Once out of Pedro Miguel, we stayed rafted and motored across Miraflores Lake to the two final locks that would lower us the remaining two steps to the Pacific. Due to the Pacific Ocean's extreme tidal variations, the Miraflores lock gates are the canal's tallest. These are probably the trickiest blocks to get into, as there was a lot of current sending us towards the gate, and we needed to lock off the lines quickly and simultaneously. But we nailed it. Going down is a lot more relaxed than going up. The water is emptied very slowly, so there is plenty of time to loosen tension on the lines. So after exiting the final lock, it was time to release the lines from our raft buddies for the last time. We couldn't wait to get to the anchorage to celebrate, so we cracked open a couple of beers while we marched the rest of the way out of the canal. Oh, cheers guys. Cheers. Cheers. <laughs>
goats. Sayonara, kids. Bye. Bye. Awesome. Bye. Safe Bye. travels. Stay in touch. Sail safe. See you on the other side of the stuff. Where are we, Benj? Well, for one, we're back on the hook. Yay! Anchored again, which is so nice. So nice to be out of the marina. But we are in Panama City. Which ocean are we in? <laughs> we made it to the Pacific. Um, it's actually the day after we made it to the Pacific because we're so bad at filming the end of things once we actually complete something. Um, but we made it through the Panama Canal yesterday um, and we're anchored just off uh, Panama City now in Las Brisas. And we had a really good canal transit. Super good. Yeah. yeah we didn't break anything. Nah. There was no drama, there was no breakages. You broke a nail. There were no tears, I almost broke a nail. Um, <laughs> I think it'll live. Um, we had a few issues with the lines at the back of Bacchus um, just because our stern is so crowded and our fair leads and cleats are really small and the lines they make you use are really fat. Um, so that was a little bit of hard work, but ultimately it was fine. We got through the locks without any dramas at all. So really, really pleased about that. Fun day actually. It was really fun. It was cool. And in comparison to when we line handled for Tula a couple of weeks ago, it was just a completely different day. So it just goes to Everything show. Everything was different. Yeah. Like going going through the canal once doesn't make you an expert on going through the canal. <laughs> who would have thought? <laughs> but um, big shout out to uh, the crew on Calicoba, uh, who we met in Shelter Bay. Really fantastic bunch of Aussies. They came through with us, Aussies and um, French. Uh, We've just been binge watching their their YouTube channel. It's so good. It's so, so good. Go and give that a watch. <laughs> so, uh, very funny lads. Yeah, uh, sailing vessel Calicoba, uh, hilarious. Um, so yeah, it was, it was really nice to have them on board. Really good lads. And yeah. But we're shattered, eh? Absolutely zonked. Yeah. Like, Did, so tired. Uh, we're talking about going to bed, and I mean, the sun is not hasn't even been dark. Yet. Yeah. It takes a lot out of you, that canal. But now we go. Now we go. South. Now we go southwest. Yeah. Um, heading to French Poly. Exciting stuff. Stay tuned. <clears throat> Join us on our next episode as we do our final provisions for our Pacific crossing, dodge lightning storms, and finally get to explore some beautiful islands again. If you're keen to know how you can support us, hit the link for our Patreon page. <laughs>